Can you please turn on the microphone? I believe I'm on. Thank you. And have we confirmed that we have a quorum? Uh, yes, we are supposed to have. Uh... Ah. Virtual faces. <laughs> Hi, everyone. All right, since you guys seem to be queued up here, um, we will call the February 8th meeting of the Architecture Review Board uh, into session. And if we can start with a roll call, please, Steve. All right. Joel Clark. Here. Marcus Savaglio. Present. Jerry Jones. Here. Richard Lindy. Richard Lindy. Pam Langen was going to be missing today. Robert Heimerl also called in and indicated that he was not going to be here. Charlie Wig. Charlie Wig. So right now we have three and we need four. Four. Anyone online that I missed? As we put things on pause for a minute, you want to try and contact folks? Sure, I can. Uh, so it would come down to Charlie and. Charlie or Dick. Dick. I'll be right back. <laughs> Thank you. We do need to go to a commercial timeout after all.
Yes, has someone else joined the call? Hey, this is Charlie. Hi, Charlie. Excellent. I believe that brings us to a quorum. Excellent. Thanks for calling in, Charlie. And with of course, that, I was just having trouble with the punch button. I put hit the wrong number. I'm sorry. No, no problem. No problem. And with that, we can get things rolling. Uh, so I would ask everyone to please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. It's always fun with the delay. <laughs> yes. Uh, item 1.3 is identification of any potential conflicts of interest with today's items. Anything from board members? Hearing none, we will move on to item 1.4, approval of the minutes from way back September 28th. And Steve, can we just do that as a... I move to approve. I second. Thank you. Do we need roll call for this or can we just do a voice vote? We can do a voice vote. All right. So we have a motion and a second. I don't know if we got who. Marcus and Charlie. Great, thank you. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Minutes are approved. Thank you very much. Uh, brings us to item 3.1. The proposed construction of the new warehouse and salt shed by the Sheboygan Area School District at the Horace Mann site. Uh, and if you want to bring your team up and just give a quick introduction, if you can use the podium mic just so that it goes out to uh, everyone. We're on uh, now? Excellent. All right, good afternoon. Uh, Matt Wolfert with Bray Architects, Joel Wilmer, Sheboygan School District. Uh, and then Mark Miller is joining from Bray as well on the uh, screen share or virtual option. So. Uh, good to see everybody today. Uh, the, propo the proposal is to construct an approximately 9,000 square foot a storage warehouse with a detached salt uh, shed. This is replacing one to two buildings within the, the district and the city as well. So replacing one existing structure, some rented space, really consolidating maintenance and storage operations for the school district to one far more central location. Uh, and definitely in a newer structure uh, to where they're currently operating out of. Uh, the location is really a, a relatively unvisible spot within the Horace Mann property. Um, grade is about 15, 16 feet lower uh, where we'll be constructing the building um, from the closest uh, adjacent roadway of George Avenue. Uh, and, and really the, the proposal is split face CMU base in the color roughly uh, as Joe is holding up the, the, the darker brown color here. The metal panel uh, upper, the metal structure in more of a tan, and then the accent trim color in, in the darker or gray to black, which is really generally in alignment with existing Horace Mann uh, colors. Don't have exact until we go through the process of acquiring the metal building, but the, the general earth tone neutrals to blend into the landscape, and I wouldn't say be complementary, but be uh, similar in, in tone and aesthetic to the Horace Mann Middle School. So again, we feel it's a, it's a good project through a variety of lenses and probably the biggest one is freeing up a site which is, is in a dilapidating uh, building that the district needs to move away from. And we feel like this site and location was specifically selected uh, to have the least visual impact possible on the neighbors to the property. So we uh, welcome any questions or thoughts you may have. Great, thank you. Uh, I guess these are pretty simple, straightforward utilitarian buildings. I guess the biggest questions I had were on the actual materials and colors and how those uh, fit, but you, you've verbally described that. Uh, I guess I would ask that once those are set, that you submit actual colored elevations with the materials uh, to, to staff, just to confirm that everything looks good then. Um, but other than that, I guess to clarify for the rest of the board that there are some variances being requested as part of this project, but that's not our purview. The Planning Commission will be dealing with those. Uh, so we're really just looking at the aesthetics of the building in the, propo the location proposed. Uh, and I, I, have I do have a question. Yes, please proceed. Between the building and the um, tennis court, 
is a major walkway to the back soccer field. And during the season, that area is constantly wet. Are you putting a sidewalk between that area? And where is the watershed from the building planning to go? The, the existing um, sidewalk that you're talking about is on the south side of the tennis courts. This building is going on the north side of the tennis courts. I agree with you, but the major walkway, um, uh, the parents and the children always walk on the grass on the opposite side. They don't actually use the blacktop walkway that was put in for the backfield. Yeah, there, there will be sufficient room between the south face of the new building and the north face of the tennis courts to allow that pedestrian flow to work. In general, the stormwater moves, if I remember correctly, from, I'll say, north to northeast around to the west and southwest yes. of the building. Um, and that drainage pattern will be maintained with obviously some minor grade revisions to support the project, but that general movement of stormwater will remain. So it, I think, um, could I get the plan real quick? Um, I think on the plan it looks like, that say about 20? It's about 20 feet. About yep, 20 there's still gonna be sufficient room for not only pedestrian movement, but the district needs to maintain movement for lawn mowing equipment and other things through that location. Charlie, did that answer your question? But there's no plan. There's no plan for a sidewalk or another um, drainage tube where the water flows between the trees and the new building. There is, is going to stay natural. Is that the, the plan? There is not a sidewalk planned. Correct. The drainage will be revised, uh, but it's not being done to specifically address the issue you referenced. It's being done to make sure we can move stormwater sufficiently around the new building. It, it can't, it's not gonna hold up my vote. I think it's a great project. I just think it's something you guys um, could consider because it is the major traffic flow path for that field. And most parents usually walk away with wet feet during the spring because of the excess water in the drainage ditch behind your building. We'll mention- the tennis courts. Sorry, Charlie, we'll mention that to the civil engineer, make sure they've taken that into account. And as always, we've got the sidewalk in slightly yeah. the wrong place. Should have been <laughs> north instead of south, it sounds like. Yeah, well, also 9,000 square feet of building, that's a lot of water drainage. So, you know, that was the one dry field that the younger children played on all the time because the, the, the soccer fields are always wet. There's always a drainage problem. There's always a worry about ruining the turf hence why you guys put in a big turf field, which is amazing. Um, but it's the one dry field that they continue to play on and now it's gonna be gone. So I'm just curious about the drainage issues that are in that area. Yeah, yeah well, just, just to be clear, we're not affecting any existing fields with this project. We're building over the top of what used to be sand volleyball courts. I agree that you didn't call it a field, but I will tell you that they used it as a field every day. Fair, open green space, there's a, a bit of that affected, agreed. <laughs> yeah, because it was dry. The, the area you're building on is drier than the surrounding area around it, so. All right, that, that was just my question, that's all I have. Thank you. We appreciate your insights, Charlie. You, you know the site way better than the rest of us, it sounds like. Uh, other questions sure. or comments from the board? Uh, this is Jerry Jones. Um, I, I live one block over from the existing site that they uh, store the sand and uh, salt at, so I'm glad to see that eyesore go. Uh, the sooner the better, and I live not too far from Horace Mann by consequence. So I would make a motion to approve as presented subject to staff recommendation. Second. We have a motion and second. Was that Marcus seconding? Thank you. Any further discussion? Hearing none, I think we probably need the roll call vote. Sounds good. Joe Clark? Aye. Marcus Savaglio? Aye. Jerry Jones? Aye. And Charlie Wig? Aye. Great, that is approved. Thank you. All right. All right. See you tomorrow. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Great, thanks. And good luck with Plain Commission. We'll be there. That brings us to item 3.2, uh, the resubmittal of the exterior remodel proposed at A Million Dreams, 1423 North 29th. Gavin, if you and your team could please 
give introductions and uh, tell us what's changing and why. I'm Angel Berry. I'm executive director and co-founder of A Million Dreams. Uh, Gavin Dorsch with Abacus Architects, and I'll let her explain the reason for some of the resubmittal, and then I will take any questions concerning materials and uh, other building components. So along with everybody else on the planet, it seems like, we had some hiccups with COVID. Um, some of our funding turned out to be not as deep as we had hoped. Um, so we went back to architecture and made some adjustments to the plan to cut those costs down so that we're not buried in, in fundraising and we can move closer to getting this open faster. Uh, basically, we've taken out, exterior-wise, we've taken out uh, some of the windows on 29th Street. Um, and we've changed the siding. So we're, uh, we took out the steel siding and we're putting in vinyl, fiber cement, fiber cement whatever that is. Um, but the colors are all staying the same. The, we've also eliminated the kitchen addition, which would be in our backyard on the backside. Um, and we've eliminated one of the, the door overhangs in the back um, in about the same section that you're in right now and uh, move that ex extended one to the southern back door. That's about it, I think. Okay. Well, unfortunately, I think we can all relate with uh, the issues that you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. Um, a shame to see it not taken to quite the level that, that it was previously, uh, but it still looks as if it's tidying up the property nicely, uh, mm -hmm. putting it to good use. Um, so I, I really didn't have anything from my end. Any other questions or comments uh, from the rest of the board? I make a motion to approve. We have a motion from Marcus. Second. And a second from Jerry, I believe. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Steve, if you could do the roll call vote, please. That was good. Joe Clark? Aye. Marcus Savaglio? Aye. Jerry Jones? Aye. And Charlie Wig? Yes. Looks like we are approved. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good luck with the project. Thank you. Steve, if you need any of the components on what it's going to look like. I can get you those now that we're moving forward a little farther. Sounds good. Okay. Thanks, Kevin. Which brings us to item 3.3, the proposed exterior renovation at Petro Center at 905 Indiana Avenue. I believe that applicant must be joining us remotely. I am, yes, I'm here. Hi there, if you wouldn't mind uh, giving a brief introduction and tell us a little bit about what you're pro proposing for the project. Be happy to. Uh, so this is a renovation of the existing building at 905 uh, Indiana Ave. And the owner currently has a, a kind of a, a abandoned uh, car wash at the rear of the building, which you can see in the uh, site plan there. What he's looking at doing is converting that into a small uh, restaurant space, and as part of that, doing a little bit of renovation to the exterior of the building. So obviously putting in new windows and doors in the, the back car wash space, but then also looking at uh, adding to uh, the exterior for a, a paint scheme just to sort of unify that entire property. There's opportunity along the street frontage to create some green space, uh, so we're taking advantage of that as part of this. Uh, but we think this will really clean up and, and make that site uh, nice again. Great. And this is a another fairly straightforward one. I think it was just the addition of a few windows that sort of kicked it from just a staff level approval to the board. Um, so, Steve. So everyone knows, uh, again, what they're talking about is there was an old car wash portion. That's what they're taking a look at. You can kind of see in the... Uh, rendering that it shows the tables and the kitchen um, uh, that is presently vacant. Looks like they're going to do some improvements and quite a bit of painting to you can kind of see photos of the existing facility and uh, there are some improvements that are taking place 
and Adam, would you be, uh, Adam James is from Vision Architects, he's who's presenting today. Could you just kind of indicate um, uh, of what you're doing with the storefront and the paint scheme and the mansard and what's all actually taking place? Yeah, sure can. So the, the exterior, as you can see in the rendering there, we're, the rear part of the building that used to be the car wash, we're taking the overhead doors out and then we're adding in some storefront there. And then there's a, a couple small windows on one side of the building that would be the, I guess it would be the southwest side. Uh, we've got a couple windows shown there. Uh, the, the main access into the space would be both on the north and the south side. Again, there are existing garage door open, openings. We're just putting new storefront in there. All of the existing mansards on the building, so the architecture of the building all stays the same. We're not proposing to change any of that. Uh, what you're seeing in those renderings is really just an updated paint scheme. So we've got uh, a couple different shades of gray on there and then maintaining that red uh, accent along the top of the building. The, the existing building's obviously a little tired. Um, I think what, what you've <laughs> done is uh, fairly simply just given it a, a new life, uh, introducing that horizontal yeah. banding provides a nice ordering system for the building. Um, so nice to see it uh, get spruced up a little bit. Um, I, I really didn't have any other questions or concerns. Uh, other board members, questions, comments from your end? Mr. Chair, I've got one question. Are, are we really attached to that red color at the top? Um, <laughs> it's uh, it's a, a corporate branding color, um, so we we just kind of stuck with what was there. Fair enough. Uh, <laughs> and what's going to be served in the restaurant? I'm excited to know. Uh, so Jeff has has been in contact with the owner. Jeff is with Sierra Structures. He could probably comment a little more on on what the the food service is going to look like. A good question, Mark. Jeff, you want to take that one? There we go. But yeah, so it's going to be a restaurant of grab and go sandwiches, uh, fish fry, um, uh, deep fried appetizers type of thing, sandwich. And uh, and I'm trying to remember if your submittal talked about the mechanicals and any changes to uh, visibility of mechanical equipment. We don't anticipate any. Uh, they'd be on the roof, um, and we're anticipating locating that far enough away from the parapet that it's not visible from the ground. I guess with the, the mention of the kitchen, one thing that often comes up is that uh, exhaust requirement and whether that ends mm -hmm. up being visible on an exterior wall or if that's also going up through the roof. We would go through the roof on that. Okay. Marcus, did the food choice get your vote? I'd make a motion to approve at this point. <laughs> All right, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. That was Jerry. Uh, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Steve, if you could do the roll call, please. Joe Clark. Aye. Alderperson Savaglio. Aye. Jerry Jones. Aye. And Charlie Wig. Yes. Super. We are approved for item 3.3. Thank you very much. Uh, and is Thank it you. the Thank you. same team presenting for 3.4? Uh, yes. The proposed new convenience store and service station at North 26th and Superior. So again, Adam, are you uh, able to give us a brief description of that project, please? I sure can. Um, again, this is uh, another same same owner on this one, but this is a new service station uh, fronting on Superior. Um, you know, with a new service station, obviously there's a lot more flexibility in materials and colors and things. So uh, we're excited about what we're presenting here. I think it'll be a nice addition 
uh, to this uh, this main kind of thoroughfare frontage. Uh, if you look at the site plan, we've got a 3,000 square foot building. Uh, we've got a small trash enclosure on the east side, kind of tucked back behind the building. Uh, adjacent to that, there's a, a spot for some stormwater management, so we're covering that on the site layout. And then we've got a canopy, a fuel canopy, uh, out in the center of the of the site area with basically three uh, pump islands on it. Uh, we're, we've got access shown off of uh, Superior and then also the side street uh, adjacent to it, which I think is 26. Yes. Um, and then we are also providing a pedestrian connection from that uh, public sidewalk uh, to the front door of the building. The floor plan, just a, an interior layout of this, pretty typical of what you'd see. Maybe one uh, little nuance to this is we are proposing a small restaurant use in this as well. Uh, so that's on the, uh, on the west side of the building. And from an elevation standpoint, uh, we're showing something here that's got a real contemporary, uh, modern look. Um, I don't have anything for the red color, so <laughs> I'm not trying to get all red in the city of Sheboygan. Um, this accent color on this one may change depending on his partnership or the branding of the, uh, the service station. So depending on where that lands, uh, that, that could potentially change. But on this, pro this particular project, we're showing just a small amount of that, uh, not as much as the last one. Um, you know, we've got a, a base of masonry uh, on this building, a good solid ground, um, and then we've got some uh, some paneling and things of, on the upper facade portion of it, trying to keep it really crisp and really bright, uh, make it look clean and and uh, and again very modern. Great, that that will certainly be a. A change along Superior. Um, so mm -hmm. the the canopy and pumps, I believe, are a future submittal and really not part of what we're looking at today. Is that right, Steve? Correct. That's correct. I, I think the drawings that you, you have before you in terms of the perspective give you an idea or a concept. And I think um, I think there would be the ability if the board wanted to say, hey, you're headed in the right direction. If you brought something in similar to that, I think that's something we would consider. I do think that the uh, posts uh, with the brickwork that matches are things that we've tried to see in other recent uh, service station proposals and the colors matching. So I think they're headed in the right direction, but um, they would need to bring that back at such time as they have a definitive answer on what direction they're heading. Great, thank you for that clarification. Um, and yes, I would agree that what's shown in the renderings seems to be the, the right sort of direction of what we've been asking for on other similar projects. So if that were to come back uh, as shown, um, that probably good, but if there are any other thoughts or concerns from board members, please feel free to weigh in on that too. But as we focus on the building, there were just a few things that jumped out to me, so I'll hop in on those. First one was the the alignment of the tower in plan. Um, it's shown with that glass top piece wrapping the whole way around. Uh, but then when you go to the plan, that doesn't align with the, the wall layout for the, uh, the division of the restaurant to the, uh, the rest of the space. Um, so it looks as if there must be something happening with a, an interior soffit offset between the wall and the glass up above. Um, Adam, is that something you can speak to? Uh, it's probably just a, a last minute floor plan change that didn't uh, work its way through the elevations. I think we would try to align those uh, for simplicity. Okay. That, the, the, the transition there could make for some kind of funky architecture inside, but uh, if the intent had been to have a display shelf or something, that, that would make sense. Um, but yes, it would be ideal if uh, if you can align it, uh, just that's losing space out of the, uh, the sales area. Um, second question was on that red band. I personally mm -hmm. don't have a, a problem with the color. <laughs> um, but the thickness shown, it, it looks fairly thin, like it's maybe an eight to 10 inch tall band. I'm just curious on, yep. 
on the canopy projection part of it, uh, what you anticipate the structure being for that, uh, and being able to support it and shed water uh, and remain that thin. Yeah, more than likely what we would do there would be, uh, and I don't know that this has been completely decided yet, but it would either be a sunshade so that it's not carrying uh, water, or it would be something that was very minimal, like you know a steel deck type canopy. Okay, we've just seen in the past similar items on submittals that then as you get through the detailing, you realize that it has to be a lot thicker or it introduces downspouts or other elements that just change the look a little bit. Uh, so if anything right. does change from that, that would need to come back uh, as a resubmittal. Uh, and then okay. I think the last thing on my list was uh, without having a building section, uh, not sure what the parapet height is around the perimeter that I believe you're using for screening the mechanicals. Uh, what kind of parapet height are you looking at? Um, I don't know that I have those on here, but we'd probably be in the neighborhood of two to three feet. So I guess without that and sort of the presumably some rooftop units in there to know what the line of sight would be, um, just wanting to make sure that those those units are sufficiently hidden from uh, the street elevations. Okay. Uh, and as far as I'm concerned, if that can be uh, included on additional drawings to come back for staff uh, to check at that level, uh, I don't know that that would need to hold up the approval at this point. But uh, okay. open for further discussion from the, the rest of the board. What, what are you guys thinking? Other thoughts from your end? Why are we separating the canopy from the building? if you're proposing to build a gas station? Can you repeat the question, Charlie? You, you want me to, I can answer that. Uh, because U.S. Venture, U.S. Oil uh, does the canopy and gas pump portion. Uh, but this time we're really just going for architectural approval on the building. And then the canopy is a separate company and a separate contract as far as we're concerned. We just feel like it should be a separate submittal. Just to clarify, Charlie, you're, you're asking why it's a separate submittal rather than physically attached to the building? Right, you kind of just pigeonhole us to accepting whatever comes through to the next submittal because the building for the parcel is already done. It just seems like it should have been submitted at the same time. Yeah, Steve. yeah that, that was something we definitely talked about. It, it sounds like it's two different contractors and that's why they put it in the perspective. You're right um, in terms of uh, uh, coming in that was one of the reasons why i said that there's no question that before there's any type of permit issuance that that needs to be in here so we can confirm that it is consistent with the uh main building so you're right it would be nice to have it come in at the same time but based on what the applicants indicated to us i said this is how they could proceed and how we would handle that okay so they won't get building permits until both are approved that's correct. That's what you're saying? Uh, that's at this point in time. Now, now, gentlemen, uh, did you guys, I'm assuming that the canopy is gonna, going to be coming in at about the same time. Do you have any comments with regards to that? From a construction standpoint? Conceptually, conceptually what we're presenting here is, is accurate. Um, but as far as... Um, the timing of the canopy, uh, it should it should align um, with with whatever else we need to send in. All right, with that information, I have a motion to approve. Uh, I will begrudgingly second that, even though there is a red line on it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Reese. 
I would I would imagine you guys would not have any issues with um, the aspect of the applicant submitting the final drawings with the uh, specifics that were uh, addressed and that staff could review those and if there were any issues I could bring those back. Is everyone in agreement with that amendment to the motion? Yes. Yes. And is that sufficiently recorded for the minutes that uh, we can agreement that that does make sense? So we are uh, going to vote on the the motion to approve with the final package of colors and materials coming back to staff for approval. So with that, if we could go to the roll call, please. Joe Clark. Aye. Alderperson Savaglio. Present. Or yes. <laughs> Jerry Jones. Aye. Charlie Wig. Aye. Yes, I second it. Perfect. I think that gets us our approval. So congratulations. Thank you very much for uh, what looks as if it should be a nice building on that part of the uh, superior. Uh, and is plan condition yeah, still? Yeah, I can comment. I, uh, one of the things that I would just kind of uh, forewarn you guys is to, you may want to take a look at some of the conditions and the staff report for tomorrow. Um, the owner, uh, uh, Mr. Adhikari, does have some uh, miscellaneous items, signage, and different things that will be discussed at tomorrow's meeting. So it may not be a bad idea to uh, read through that ahead of time because there will be discussion. All right, thank you very much. Um, any other items from the board to discuss before we adjourn? We, uh, could I have one? Steve, uh, we, we will be meeting uh, there are items, and we will be meeting on February 22nd. Super. Uh, and if I could get a motion for adjournment. So moved. And a second. Second. And uh, just a voice call. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any, Aye. any Aye. opposed? Then we are adjourned. Thank you very much, everyone. Appreciate your time. Thank, Thank you. Thanks, you guys. Bye. All right. Hey. Yeah, right. Exactly. Exactly. I, I got it.